Once upon a time in Hollywood, today I would like to talk to you about three types of uh, men and um, I want to talk to you about why women fall in love with the unsuccessful, uh, brutal, um, violent men instead of looking and falling in love with successful guy um, and I will share with you my knowledge how and why we fall in love with the wrong person. Uh, hi guys, if you don't know me, my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. Uh, this is my YouTube channel where I share with you my knowledge and often I do a free webinar. So if you are not on my uh, subscribers list, Please uh, use the link below, subscribe, and I will send you absolutely free uh, an invitation to my next uh, free webinar where you can join me, ask your questions, and learn something new to become happier and more successful in life. Okay, today we're going to talk about the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I would like um, to talk about three men uh, in this movie. Uh, the first one is uh, Brad Pitt. He was playing the role of Cliff. The second one is um, Leonardo DiCaprio. He was playing the role of Rick. And the third one is uh, Roman Polanski. And I and my girlfriends, we went to the movie theater and we saw this movie. And after the movie, we, we went to the bar and start discussing uh, like male characters in uh, that movie. And I was surprised because half of the group, they fall in love with the Brad Pitt character, with the Cliff. And uh, if you did not see the movie, I highly recommend you to do it because it's going to be easier for you to understand what, am I, uh, what I'm talking about. And Brad Pitt, he um, uh, was playing a uh, role of Cliff, who was the stuntman for an actor. Rick and actor Rick was Leonardo DiCaprio. So the Brad Pitt was a guy who was violent and brutal during the whole movie. But when we look at him and I have some photos to show you. So this is he's driving his boss car. He looks handsome. He's um, charismatic. And look at this photo like the girl she's fallen for him and she's offering herself to him. And for example, this photo, he's smiling, he's open, he's looking, you know, into his um, boss. Uh, again, this photo, uh, Rick, he is sad, he is uh, disappointed, he is angry in a way. And again, uh, Brad Pitt, he's looking um, into his eyes, uh, he has a very confident posture. And uh, this guy, the Brad Pitt, he has a dog. And that's why many women fall in love with this type. Because he's handsome, he's tall, he's strong, he looks confident, and he has a dog. And look at this picture. He's like, wow, I'm a stuntman, but I'm, I behave like I'm a billionaire, like I am a super successful actor. But in reality, he's just a stuntman. And his job depends on his boss. Um, and when I was talking to my girlfriends, one girl said that she wants to have a man like him in the real life. And unfortunately, she was kind of sad, like, unfortunately, those, uh, uh, this type of man, they don't really exist because this is a movie. And I told her, I said, like, why do you want to be with this man? Because this man is violent and during the whole movie, he is violent. The first episode where he was violent uh, was about uh, the friendly contest with Bruce Lee. And he threw that man into the car and created a dint. So it was not really f um, friendly. Yeah, He could restrain him, but he was aggressive and he threw him to the car. The second episode where he uh, showed uh, extreme violence was when he went to the ranch and the guy pierced his tire and because he pierced his tire and because he was rude to him uh, so cliff uh brad pitt decided to punch him 
and he punched him not once, not twice, he punched him several times. And the guy was all in blood, fixing his tire. So do you think, is it kind of normal to punch in the face a guy who pierced your tire? And he was doing it like again and again and again. And at the end of the movie, he almost killed three people. He killed two of them and uh, almost killed the third one. The, uh, I think it was an accident that he did not kill the third one. Uh, and he was a stuntman, so he knew self-defense. He was extremely knowledgeable how to do self-defense. He had a great uh, skills of uh, in self-defense. So instead of just restraining young uh, gangsters and calling the police, he was uh, mm, he was killing them. And I don't remember it was a guy or a girl. He grabbed, let's say, him by his hair and was hitting him against the wall and against the telephone, like old style telephone, like again, again, and then again and again. So he was extremely violent. And uh, during the movie, people were saying that he killed his wife and got away with it. So he, they did not say that he was accused of killing his wife. They did not say that it was an accident or it was a strange story. No, the rumor was saying that he killed his wife and got away with it. So this is how we women fall in love with a violent man. We create a toxic relationship when we see all those signs and we say, no, he's not such an awesome man. So my friend said like, yes, this guy, he's awesome. He is going to protect me. I can feel safe around him. Can you? Can you really feel safe around the guy who is violent and who killed his wife and got away with it? At the end of the movie, not at the end, during the whole movie, we know that this guy, he lives in a trailer, in a tra trailer in Venice. And Venice is like middle class area in Los Angeles. And he lived uh, not in a studio, not in an apartment, he lived in a trailer. The guy who is like uh, in his late 40s, late um, maybe early 50s, he was living in a trailer with the dog so do you want to live with this guy in a trailer with the dog and my friend said that uh he has a kind heart he has a dog and his dog is well trained so he had like deep connection with his dog doesn't it show you something and yes his dog is well trained but his dog is trained violent um in order to teach a dog to bite flesh like a positive uh, treat based training is not gonna work I, I had a chance to be a roommate with the dog trainer at the time and i saw how he trained dogs so uh, you can uh, teach the dog like regular obedience sit down lie uh, come here with the um, uh, training treats but if you need to teach a dog how to bite like canine dogs you have to be violent, you have to be strict, and you have to be, you have to teach the dog how to be aggressive, how to attack the person. And he, his dog knows how to attack the person. His dog knows how to bite another person. And we're not talking here about the stuntman stuff anymore. Stuntman, he does uh, uh, different acrobatics moves and he can jump, he can uh, fall down without hurting himself. This guy, he's not just a stuntman, he's like a bodyguard. And uh, because he lives with the dog, because he's handsome, because he uh, is self-confident, it does not mean that he's a good guy. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his career. So he is in his uh, late 40s, uh, beginning maybe of his 50s, maybe even more. Uh, it's not that clear in the movie. And he lives in a trailer. He did not rent a room. He did not rent uh, an apartment. He lives in a dirty, smelly trainer, trailer. Yes, with a dog. But do you want to be with a guy who is in his 50s and live with him in a smelly trailer? And... Uh, at the end of the movie, movie, this guy, he uh, was fired because his boss told him that he has a wife. Now he uh, cannot afford him anymore. He has expenses and he has to spend a lot of money on his wife. So he lost his job. 
he was uh, pierced with a knife to his leg and uh, at this point his uh, stuntman career either gonna end or maybe he will be able to come back to his career later when his leg is gonna heal but again he's in his 50s and even if you're an amazing great stuntman probably your career is uh, gonna end uh, pretty soon so at the end of the movie we have a guy who cannot really do his uh, work who was fired by his boss uh, who has no friends no uh, wife he killed his wife and got away with it he lives in a trailer and he's single and girls are saying wow Wow, such an amazing guy. So when you're gonna watch this movie, look again and uh, think about his lifestyle and uh, try to analyze uh, how he thinks, what he does. And yes, in the movie, he was kind of killing, uh, hurting, fighting a bad guys. But it does not mean that if you are killing three bad guys, you are good. If you were able to restrain and call police and let other people to decide uh, to judge them, it's one thing. But when you trained as a bodyguard and you know how to kill and you're killing people, then I'm not sure if it's, uh, what do you think? Should you, do you have the right to kill a person? If you know how to kill, if you know self-defense, do you think that you have the right to kill a person actually? Let's talk about the second character in the movie, uh, which is uh, Rick. Let me show you the photos. Rick. Okay. Oops. Rick. Leonardo DiCaprio. And he is an actor. And the first part of the movie, we see his career. We see the fragments from different movies, how he was jumping, fighting and uh, playing parts in different movies. And we saw that he was building his career and <clears throat> he was successful. He, buy, uh, he bought a house in uh, Los Angeles Hills and uh, mm, he was going through different editions and working with different people. Uh, he got into drinking problems and because he mm, drank uh, too much, and on the next day, he was uh, having a um, problem uh, with remembering the script. And yes, he had a nervous breakdown. And yes, he had a problem with an alcohol. But he was able to get himself back. Uh, during the break, he went to his um, room where like the actor's room and he had a self-talk. Uh, through the mirror uh, and he was able to get himself back. He talked to himself, he was uh, telling himself that he should quit uh, drinking, that he is gonna ruin, this drinking is gonna ruin his career and he was going, you know, um, like uh, forward and back in this small room talking to himself. And at the end, uh, he was able to finish uh, that day with a huge success. He was playing great and um, even the director of the movie came to him and said that it was amazing. He was not just following the script, he also added some elements uh, that he got from being in a role. So we see the guy who is struggling with uh, alcohol but he was able to work on uh, the, his problem and he had a nervous breakdown and he was able to um, solve this nervous breakdown and time to time he's complaining to his um, stuntman to cliff to brad pitt about his hard life and when you see uh, a rich guy who lives in the, uh, in a big house um, complains to a stuntman of course you feel bad for a stuntman but in reality, if you look uh, into this movie, we saw m many years of career that uh, Rick, Leonardo DiCaprio, went through. And we see that he was actually working, making money, creating new uh, connections. And uh, Brad Pitt, Cliff, he was just following him. Uh, Brad Pitt, Cliff, had his job only because Rick got specific role in specific movie Cliff was needed uh, and at the end of the movie uh, we see 
this guy, Rick Leonardo DiCaprio, hanging out in a pool, enjoying his life with a beautiful uh, Italian wife. And a lot of girls, they do not see this type of man. They see him as a complaining guy. They see him as a like, boring guy, uh, the guy who cannot connect, the guy who... like. And if you compare this guy to uh, Brad Pitt character, they both approximately the same age. They look similar because they, like one is the stuntman for another one. Uh, but one guy at the end of the movie has an expensive house, an Italian wife, a successful career. He was recognized by other actors. At the end of the movie, he was not popular just within his fans, but he was living in a neighborhood with other uh, producers and actors, and they invited him to their home. So basically, they said, wow, we know you. You are Rick, you're a famous actor. We would like to hang out with you. This is a different, this is the next level of recognition. When other actors, when uh, other professional people in your career saying, wow, we know you, uh, we want to be with you, want to be your friends, want to hang out with you. This is not just, you know, you and a whole bunch of uh, fans. It's like you went through the professional level of recognition. And we have like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? With the wife, with the house, with a successful career, hanging out in a pool. And we have a Cliff who is uh, living in a trailer with a dog, no friends no work he was just fired without the wife single and a third person uh, who was uh, Roman Polanski and he was a producer nobody even noticed him a lot of girls too, we did not notice this type of guy and he was quiet yes we did not see and i'm talking about the movie i'm not talking about his real life i'm talking about the movie so in the movie he was quiet uh he was successful he had a white beauty um, blonde beautiful wife uh they got married she flew for him uh to ukraine uh, they were spending and having time at the Playboys parties. They were laughing. They were driving nice car. They lived even, uh, you know, in the same expensive area where the Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, and he was enjoying his life, basically. The uh, guy who is not that charismatic, the guy who is not... Um, he was, I think I have a picture of him, too. Yes, so the guy who did not really try to show off, he had his girlfriend, then they got married, she got pregnant, they were spending time together having fun. And he, uh, his wife, she was beautiful, she was happy, she was uh, hanging out by herself, uh, uh, she was also a successful um, actress. So this is different level of success. Successful guy, successful girl, uh, happy couple, uh, happy marriage, spending time together. And a lot of women, they dream about this type of life, but they fall in love with the guy like Cliff, like Brad Pitt. So uh, I would like you to think about what type of guy do you like? Do you uh, like Cliff? Do you like uh, Rick or do you like uh, Roman Polanski and why? Why do you like him? And uh, try to, maybe if you have a chance, uh, go and see this movie again. Try to see those characters uh, from a different perspective. From a perspective, am I going to be happy with this type of guy? Am I going to feel safe and protected uh, during my life? Uh, am I going to be able to create a family with this type of guy. Uh, what can I expect from our relationship in 10, 15, 20 years? And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if yes, please click like and write your comment below this video. That means a lot to me. And let me know if you would like to see more uh, videos like this uh, about psychological analysis of uh, movie characters. 
I think it's a great way to learn about psychology based on the popular movie and this is uh, uh, how you can compare your life with the uh, movie on the screen. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below, click like and please join me for the next free live webinar. Uh, below this video you will find the link and you can sign up you will just have to enter your name email and click subscribe and then I will send you uh, an invitation on my next webinar and it's gonna be absolutely free okay uh, my name is Elena Semenek and this is psychology of happiness where happiness is the purpose of life see you next time bye bye